Welcome back to Energetically You. Today, I have the honor of interviewing Lucy Liu. She is a global business strategist and certified life coach, helping high-achieving women in life transitions who feel stuck. She helps them kiss, overwhelm goodbye, and cultivate rock star confidence. So looking forward to digging into that. Uh, She also helps them find clarity, reach dream goals, and live a joyful, fulfilling life. She is an unshakable optimist, wife, mother, easygoing entrepreneur, and certified I Am Remarkable Woman Empowerment Workshop Facilitator. Woo, it's a mouthful and an international motivational speaker. She's the author of two best-selling books, The Rising Sisterhood and Asian Women Who Boss Up. She also inspires as the host of her weekly podcast, The Lucy Liu Show, which I had the honor of being on a couple of weeks ago. And she, sorry, the podcast is a fueling station for your mind, business, and life. She has been featured in Medium, Voyage LA, Elephant Journal, Thrive Global, Fox, CBS, NBC, and dozens of other media outlets. So let's dive in. Hi, Lucy. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. How are you? Oh, I'm totally thriving. Thank you so much for having me. Amazing. Well, I read off your bio just before, so the audience has a general idea of your amazingness. I I wanted to first ask you about rock star confidence and as if there's uh, a a reason that you use that adjective of all of them, because I love it. You know what? When I first became a life coach, I was talking to my friends about life coaching. And what came to me is that people think other people have life coaches and other people are more confident, right? So it it came to me that we want this for ourselves, but sometimes we feel what we want in life is not attainable. For example, rock star confidence. We see superstars standing on stage and, you know, many people feel it's just not possible for them. However, from my experience, and I know this to be true, confidence is not something that we're either born with or that we just don't have in our genes. It's actually a muscle that we can build on just like how we go to the gym to work on our, you know, physical muscle. It is something that we can actually repeatedly work on to get stronger and that it's absolutely possible for anyone to have. So that's why I love to use the term rockstar confidence because you can be standing on stage you can have that kind of confidence and it's absolutely possible. Yeah, I think I like it because it it's, describes so like it takes people to this childhood dream, you know, memory of wanting to be um, of wanting to be that. So can you share with us some tidbits on how you help your clients work that muscle or um, strengthen that muscle? Absolutely. You know, if you're my client, you would know my story for sure. Um, Growing up very close to Hollywood, I actually signed with a casting agency when I was back in middle school to high school. And because of my name, Lucy Liu, I went to so many auditions. And every time I went to an audition, the the casting director would really run out of their office with so much enthusiasm, yet making this such a disappointed face to see me. Oh, not the Lucy Lou. Mm -hmm. So I grew up, you know, not living up to someone's expectations. If you're listening, I want you to think about, you know, have you ever felt you're less than someone else or that you disappointed someone else or, you know, that you are just not there, right? You're just not quite there. And even just for the example of our names, for me, I have the same name as a celebrity and it just, 
it's just not possible to have another,、um, you know, say Julia Robert or Angelina Jolie because they're just so amazing out there already. And I always felt like I was nobody. But in reality, this hindrance of having my name as a celebrity, as my limiting belief. Eventually, I turned that into my asset.、Mm-hmm. Now I love my name. You know what, Lucy Liu is my actually maiden name, and I even kept it after marriage because I learned to love it to a level where I just keep deciding to shatter all my limiting beliefs because of knowing that these beliefs are not true and that any hindrance in life. Can give us the opportunity to acquire a new asset, and now I am, you know, based on this profound belief that I am somebody. So I'm an ex nobody, but I am somebody now. I am unique, and so are all of us, right? If you're listening. Right, you are amazing. You're remarkable, and that's why I started my podcast, the Lucy Liu Show. Because if even if I only help the life of one listener, I feel like I've done a contribution to this world, and that matters, right? If I even help the confidence of one amazing woman out there, I am amazing as well, because we always overthink. Um, I think the top thing I see from my clients is that we overthink, and we time on thinking about how we are overthinking. That's the、yes. funny part. But when you really just break it down, anything is possible if we take these baby steps forward. Because we're always looking at,、uh, say, you're at point A. And you're looking at someone else at point zebra, and you you're just not there. You're never there. However, if you just look at point B, and with my guidance, we focus on just getting from point A to point B. And guess what? The next thing you know, you're going from B to C, C to D, and then you're there.、Mm, I like that. But、reference. we have to stay focused and not get distracted or scattered because our brain tend to do that for us. And for you, it could be you know something else. Like people have names that are too common, names too hard to pronounce. You know, I've heard it all. Too hard to spell. It, it could be anything. It could be anything in life. For example, even though I. Graduated from a very well-known university because I'm the child of immigrants, and I just always felt my English isn't good enough. So people say, "No, Lucy, no, your English is good, right?" So probably that voice that you're telling yourself, whatever's going on in your mind, I'm going to say that's crazy too. <laughs> Tell us a little bit of about the inspiration for. I know you have two books, but I'd like to talk specifically about the Rising Sisterhood because I think it's such a a juicy and relevant topic. How how long ago did you publish that book? First of all,、um, it's, it was a collaborative book, and then we did it during the pandemic. I got, I actually published both of my co-authoring books during the pandemic.、Um, the world shut down, and I feel like. The way to rise up is that we don't. We get to choose our perspective, right? We get to、mm. choose what we what we take out of the pandemic. And I think, in order to inspire others to boss up, it was our decision to do a book together and boss up for ourselves in order to have this rising sisterhood, and so that we rise together. Right, it's about stepping into your own power, and then the name is to change your narrative. And I did talk about my story, such as my name, and I also talked about how I saw someone drown when I was five years old. So I wasn't able to swim all my life. However, a couple years back,、um, I just did it, and 
I realized that mindset shift is just a moment to moment shift. You can be holding on to something in your life that you think is impossible all your life, right? For me, that was not being able to swim for over 30 years. And it just happened. So I'm just here to tell you that it is possible once you really make that true decision to make that change. And all it takes is one true determined decision. So that's what we did. And um, what I love is that all proceeds go to charity. And it's a collective of women that comes together to tell our personal stories because everyone has a story. And when I began my coaching career, I felt like I didn't have a story. I felt like every coach out there was so amazing with these amazing, incredible stories. And I felt like I had no story. But really, when you look deep inside, if you just start journaling the events in your life, and next to it, what you do is that you write down the stories or the lessons you've learned from those events, eventually you'll see that, yes, my story is amazing too, because our personal journeys are unique to us. And even the same stories and lessons have been told a million times. It hasn't been told from your perspective and you'll start seeing your expertise once you ignite that dream. And that's what we want to do is to rise together and celebrate all the amazing women in this world. Yeah, I completely agree that, you know, it's about collaboration moving forward. And I also relate to your story about swimming. For me, it was running. You know, I was told all my adolescence that I wasn't a quote unquote runner, whatever that meant. And it wasn't until I decided to just start training for something that uh, I eventually ran, ran a marathon, but it's this idea that someone told you, you couldn't do something or, you know, you felt personally for some reason that you can't, and you just keep repeating. It. It's very powerful, but it can be just as powerful to rewrite it. So tell us about the, I am remarkable woman empowerment workshop facilitator. So first the hashtag, I'm guessing it's, it's an organization of women. Where did you yes. find it? And, and how did you get involved? I love this workshop so much because I, I personally attended it myself. My friend was a facilitator and it is hashtag. I am remarkable is actually a Google initiative, empowering women and other underrepresented groups to celebrate their achievement in the workplace and beyond. So it started as a workshop for Google employees, actually, and it became so popular and it was very effective. And so they expanded into a worldwide initiative that um, it's a workshop live. Um, It could be done in person and because of COVID, it turned virtual as well, that you know, we we just issue, issue uh, address the issue of struggling to talk about our own accomplishments, right? We grow up, we all grow up in this culture that if we talk about our achievements, we seem to be less humble. And because of that, That's the reason there's imposter syndrome, because we're afraid to self-promote. And just like confidence, self-promotion, motivation, and this is also a skill. Self-promotion is also a skill. It's okay to promote yourself, right? If you have accomplished things in your personal life, in your business, in your work, professional life, it's perfectly inspiring to talk about your achievements. And that's what we try to achieve with this workshop because, hey, you know, accomplishments don't speak for themselves. You have to speak up for yourself. And by self-promoting, it builds your confidence because you are practicing the power of persuasion, right? You're practicing 
self-promoting yourself. And it, all it takes is practice, right? Building muscles takes practice. You have to go to the gym weekly, um, you know, every other day, daily. And the same thing with promoting yourself and confidence. It's just something you have to do constantly to get better at. And I think when it comes to confidence, you have to ask yourself, um, is your lack of confidence technical or mental? Mm -hmm. Right? We have to break that difference. For example, um, we're on a Zoom call right now. Uh, I would have to be very comfortable technically with being on Zoom. You know, I have to learn the features, how to get on Zoom, how to use the chat, right? Toggle between sending a message to everyone and sending a message just to one person, right? These are things that are technical that we have to learn. So if your confidence is from lack of knowing the technical part of something, take a course, right? Um, Learn it. That shouldn't be your excuse to not doing something that you want. If you feel comfortable with the technical part part of, you know, what you're doing, then what's going on is probably mental, right? And so that is why we need to do the inner work to come up with the true version of you, right? I always like to talk to my clients and say, you know, what, let's do an upgrade, right? Like a computer software upgrade. Let's do an upgrade. You know, what would the next version of you do or think Mm -hmm. or say right now, right? So it's a constant process. But it's so fun. And I always say that goal setting and reaching that next level shouldn't be shouldn't be hard because it should be fun. You should have fun along the way because in society, we're always looking at that mountain peak, like, you know, someone's standing, standing right there at the peak. And then you're not there. So that's not the way to look at it. You want to have fun along this hike up to that peak, but enjoy every turn, enjoy every, even the wrong turns, right? Because we get to see a different view. And that's the perspective I want you to take into life because that's the beauty of life and have fun along the way. Yes. Yes to all of this. I think for sure, particularly as women, we're just not taught to brag, right? And it's a skill that we need to get comfortable with. I just, in general, but particularly as entrepreneurs, I would love to know your experience. I know you're a mom, you have a family. And so have you always been a coach? And like, what part of coaching, for me, it was a huge, it just sort of fit perfectly with my interest in being like very flexible with my schedule as a mom, flexible about where I lived in the world, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm curious, like what attracted you besides like your own experience with overcoming your confidence to coaching as, as a career? Yeah, it's funny how before I started formally coaching, I didn't even know about life coaching as a career. Um, I, I knew about athletic coaches and business coaches, like more like consultants, but I was just always asked by others how I am so positive, like how, how Do I do things without support? And uh, when I learned this, I realized that I have a super natural superpower to turn negatives into positives. And I also personally transformed my own life from feeling unhappy, unhealthy, stressed out at one point to now living my life of true joy, fulfillment, and mindfulness. So I know I made a lot of bald moves in my life in in between to create this life, but I realized that with the help and guidance of a coach, that process can just be expedited. And I think coaching is really beyond a career. It is a calling. It is a calling that you feel so strong towards. Like when I learned that you can be, I was actually following a blogger who became I took her course, blogging course, to start my own personal development blog. And that's how I started. And then she became a life coach. And that's how I learned that this is a career. And when that happened, I just knew 
it's for me. And it's something that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. It's that strong of a calling that you just know that it's for you. And I love seeing the next best version of women. And it's fun because I am constantly, you know, working on myself. Because when you talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. So it's such a fun process to see how I can better myself and up level myself to improve my own life. And that's in turn going to inspire others who see my transformation and hopefully to inspire them to take those actions required because we manifest, we believe it's possible, but what it it comes down to is actually still taking those actions, even if it's a baby step. Yes. Uh, It so resonates with me that you feel like it's a calling. I feel the same way. And um, yeah, it's so powerful. So I love why. I imagine I know your response to this, but I'm be- being an eternal optimist. I personally am just so optimistic with, you know, where the the world is going in terms of options for women and coaching being like such an attractive one for so many reasons. Um, is that sort of something that you think about as well? Do you mostly work with women? What are you, What is your ideal client look like? Yes, yes, I work with women. And because most importantly, confidence is a choice, right? By working with either Megan or me, it's not that you're choosing us. It's not that you're investing in our work. You're actually investing in yourself. You're actually making the choice that you are ready, that you, because you're never truly ready. You'll never feel ready, but then you're making the decision that you're ready. Now at this moment, you are ready to step up, show up and level up. And when you make that decision, your confidence is already soaring because you made that decision, right? And of course, Mm -hmm. during the time that we work together, we're going to break down those limiting beliefs, those, you know, ceilings, because most ceilings are self-imposed, right? So we work to remove those mindset blocks and false beliefs about yourself so that, you know, you continue to feel more confidence. And I absolutely believe confidence is at the core of everything you want in life, right? You want resilience. You want to be resilient. Okay. You've got to be confident that no matter what happens in your life, you're going to be able to bounce back. Right. And you always, you can always be on the lookout for when you're not confident and you just reset yourself, have the awareness because you have made that decision, right? You can just always check in with yourself. What are you doing? Where are, where can you be more confident? And that, that goes to me for every coach out there as well, because we not only do we work with coaches, we also do self coaching, right? We coach ourselves Mm -hmm. to get back again, because just like a phone, you can always restart, restart yourself. You reboot yourself and it, it can even happen throughout the day. I'm, always constantly intentionally rebooting myself throughout the day, throughout, you know, the month of years to give myself those small aha moments, because so many women wait for aha moment in life, and they don't, they don't get it. Um, I always get asked on podcasts, you know, what was your epiphany moment? And for me, I, I've, I realized it wasn't a big epiphany turning point in life, because it, it looking for that point actually stopped me from doing what I wanted to do because I felt like I didn't have it. I didn't mm-hmm. have this tragic event. I didn't have trauma growing up. I was kind of like, you know, growing up, I didn't, I didn't have much pain. And that, that became my problem, right? Cause we <laughs> can all, we can let anything be, our hindrance. That's, that's the beauty of our brain. It's trying to protect us from anything we do in life. So, you know, it's okay. It's okay 
if you had a tough childhood, it's okay if you had a good childhood. It's okay if you're like me and we're just in the middle and nothing happened. I felt like I, my, my life was boring. But <laughs> it doesn't matter how you grew up because there's people like you out there and they're going to resonate with your story. Yes. So what are you working on personally this year, if anything? Oh, I am actually working on having more fun. Um, I'm doing more house chores as uh, my workout, right? <laughs> I used to hate doing laundry as well. Um, but now, you know, I do some squats while I'm in front of the machine. You know, <laughs> I lift my arms and I dance around doing um, hanging clothes or just um, I, I'm trying to make things more fun because this is what I do with my clients. I have them you know, list down their joy, joys of life, what make them joyful. And, and it's the same for me. I'm constantly looking for ways to better my life. And it's just such a fun process. Beautiful. Well, besides your podcast, of course, we'll have all uh, the links in the show notes, but where is the best place to connect with you? Where do you spend the most time? Ah, I am very active on Instagram at M-S-L-U-C-Y-L-I-U. That's Miss Lucy Lou. And I actually have the same handle across all social. So Facebook, LinkedIn, if you just look up that handle, you'll find me. Perfect. Well, any parting last bits of advice you want to leave us on confidence or, um, you know, sisterhood rising up? <laughs> Well, I'd like to share my favorite quote, which is yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift, which is why we call it the present. And so if at the present moment you're here with us, believe that there is a way for everything and that more blessings are coming your way. Oh, that's beautiful. I like that. Uh, Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you more in the future, Lucy. Thank you for having me.